Welcome to the Shulamite Podcast, an extension of Shulamite Ministries and Shulamite.com, with weekly interviews and teaching with author and speaker Martha Kilpatrick and hosted by John Enslow. This weekly podcast is a way to stay connected to the ministry. So come experience anointed messages, not giving just another method, but a living impartation. We're sitting here in Carol's beautiful home, and we've just finished recording the June message of the month. And it was about the military aspect of being a Christian. And I thought it was pretty exciting. And we've got someone sitting here who's an expert on military life because she grew up the daughter of a, a World War II Air Force pilot hero. And uh, so, Carol, would you like to comment on what it's like to be in a military family? Well, it is true. I, I was a military brat, as they called us, Air Force brat. And um, I was probably one of few that loved it. But the reason I loved it was because I was just an outgoing personality. And I got to, um, if I got tired of one place, I knew it was just a matter of biding my time. I was going to get to go to a new place. So, you know, that nomadic nature was kind of um, born kind of created, the Lord created that in both Don and I, because both of us were military brats. He was an Army brat, and I was an Air Force brat. But anyway, my dad was a colonel, and he was a commander in several places where we lived. And um, so he kind of uh, ran his household the same way he ran his military troops, since it's a good thing eventually to learn through failure, I failed at, at being a uh, responsive, uh, obedient child. But I did learn in the long run because God is sovereign and God uses everything as he is taking you through life. And when I finally did come to, um, to the Lord and um, bowed my neck and bowed my head, and came to forgiveness over uh, not only my own rebellion, but, but the relationship that I had with my dad, I began to glean um, from the failure of all those years of not being obedient. And I began to see the incredible correlation between the obedience in the military and the obedience God calls us to in, in our Christian lives. And, you know, we, we in this country are all uh, what is my rights were democratic and the rest of it, we don't really have the concept i didn't have the concept that when you we, you were born into his family those rights i no longer have because my rights become his rights and um so martha's message tonight was just so powerful and strong and such a just a powerful call to take our place in the kingdom under the authority of Christ and under the authority of those that he puts in our lives. Well, I've said to Carol that when she really entered a, a commitment of obedience to the Lord, she understood authority and, and functions in it to this day and much more than you're aware of, Carol. You you uh, you just function differently than most people, because you understand authority, and most of Christianity doesn't uh, doesn't want to live under authority, and uh, especially the real test, according to Watchman Nee, is delegated authority, when God puts someone like your father was a delegated authority, but you really do have an instinct for the mindset that just fell into perfect place when you when you got it. And I appreciate that so much in you. It's that's not uh there's not a fight with your will. There's not a a struggle. <laughs> Authority is such a abused and misunderstood entity and aspect of our Christian life. We usually assign to to God uh, the aspects of our, our earthly parents 
um, that we don't particularly care for. But even that is all about authority. Our parents are our authority. That was God given authority. And, you know, you fighting authority. I've done that. Oh my gosh. My whole life, <laughs> you know, I, I, I resisted authority and resisted authority, cried abuse from authority. But when I came face to face with, with a God who I was, you know, I mean, I bowed my chest up at authority. And then when I met God, God bowed right back and won. <laughs> it's just as bigger. And I realized, oh, learning authority is just huge. I mean, you know, I, 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 I was a rebellious uh, child. I was a rebellious uh, son. I was a rebellious uh, teenager. I was a rebellious young adult, and then God got a hold of me and um, gave me an incredible amount of grace. Uh, but then when he actually was saying, okay, now now we're going to do this, it was, it was frightening because it is so total and so complete. When he, when he grabbed hold of me and started dealing with me, in authority and by authority, it's just totally and utterly, completely, totally different than we we typically live our lives. We don't we don't live by the basis. It, I don't think we can. I think that that it's not natural to go according to authority. It's natural to be rebellious. Well. It as Martha was teaching the CD of the month, one of the things that just struck me was um, when she was talking to this uh, Marine friend that she has, and he was telling her that when they go to boot camp, one of the fir first things they do is a memory wipe. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh my gosh, I would never, <laughs> I would never have thought of it like that. Now when I look back, I go, oh my gosh, it it was a it was a pretty dramatic memory wipe that the Lord had to take me through. And it was excruciating because it was totally anti to what I had been, which was absolutely rebellious to authority. And so there was a, there was a huge confrontation and stripping away of of that rebellion and that mindset. It was a transformation, a process of the transformation of my mind to come from absolute rebellion into submission to the Spirit. It was, it was huge for me. It was, I would even call it uh, violent. Mm -hmm. um, it had to be for me because... Um, My mind was so not his mind, mm -hmm. um, and and he had to bring me to a submission to him and to his will, and it was it was radical. That's that's all I can say. It was radical. I would call it a a response wipe. That all it, you know, I still had my memory, yeah. but there was a complete brainwashing, meaning uh, you know, not not in the typical way you would think of it, but it is, it is a, a washing of your brain and a washing of your response so that you respond in a totally different fashion and, and according to a totally different value system. Well said. I told him earlier, I said, you don't know this, but you're a military Christian. Because when he, when he was called to come to move here from Florida, he left family, friends, church, business, going into an, a situation that he really didn't know if he could rest his confidence in, a, a, a large unknown. You just simply went. That's what the two fishermen did. I think it was James and John. They left immediately. And I remember I'm thinking of Carolyn, her ability to be flexible. 
I had a situation. It was a small meeting, and I I needed Carol desperately to come immediately. So I called her and I said, can you drop everything and come now? She didn't say, why, what? I don't know. Let me think. She said, yes. And she was there in five minutes. <laughs> and that is a, that is a military mindset. When I'm called, I move. I don't question. And you, you really have had that, that kind of, we wouldn't have called it military, but you've had that commitment. It's a commitment. That's the, the biggest thing to me is that you have no rights and no say. I remember when my husband, uh, had he was drafted, was going to be drafted, and he chose to go in the Navy, and they said, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll give you a legal position in JAG. Oh, yeah, we'll give that. Well, they didn't. He never... He never got a position in there. He had he was a supply officer, <laughs> that ordered plane parts, and uh, and did well at it, very exceptional at it. But he didn't have any say when that, and he had no no room to uh, even oppose what they chose for him. Mm -hmm. That's how it is, and that's really isn't it? Isn't it how the the Lord is when He's Lord? Absolutely. You you really don't get to choose the route he takes with you. And best just to bow your head and be quiet. <laughs> well, when Martha was talking about the boot camp, I, I, I'm just seeing my experience, my life experience, my history a little bit differently. And I realized that when I was born again, I was put in a boot camp, ASAP. Here was this this rebellious, freedom-loving, independent woman that had no idea, really, about how to, not how to, to be sub submissive to the Lord, to, to, um, to look to Him for His will rather than doing what I wanted to do. It was, it was boot, it is boot camp. I'm not sure we ever, there's always a, a sense of boot camp going on. Training. training. There's always training going on to, um, to come under his will and his will alone. We hope you've enjoyed the Shulamite podcast. For all the latest from Shulamite Ministries, please visit us at shulamite.com where you'll find Martha's daily devotions, posts from getalongwithgod.com, and the online library of all of Martha's writings. At Shulamite.com, downloading the free Shulamite app is easy, and livingchristianbooks.com is only a click away. Thank you for joining us on this journey to discover a God worth knowing.